I'm uh, pleased to take part in this year's regulatory information conference. Thank you to each of you who is attending this session and to those who are tuning in to our webcast. Uh, I also want to add my thanks to uh, those of everyone who's spoken before me, to the uh, NRC employees who make this conference possible. I tend to note every year that uh, this very impressive event is fueled by the hard work of the, uh, the staff that are responsible for the RIC, also the many NRC staff who volunteer just to facilitate and make sure that things go smoothly. And as soon as this conference ends, they will begin their hard work and planning for the following year. But it is their hard work uh, and a commitment to this conference that make it such a success. Uh, I will also acknowledge our many colleagues in attendance who are joining us from across the country and really around the world. Uh, thank you for traveling, in some cases, very great distances uh, to be here. I also acknowledge the presence of uh, important partners from uh, federal and state agencies. The NRC has many relationships with other agencies that are so essential and vital to the successful accomplishment of our mission. I want to thank you for being here, but also for many of you agreeing to participate and be part uh, presenter and participate in, in some of our technical sessions. That really adds to the quality of our program. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of a number of the current members of the Advisory Committee on Reactor Safeguards, as well as any members of the Advisory Committee on the Medical Uses of Isotopes. Uh, I want to thank them for their technical contribution to the Commission's deliberations on many complex matters over the course of the years. Uh, for any of you who aren't aware, the Advisory Committee on Reactor Safeguards was established under its current name by the Atomic Energy Commission in 1953, and it was made a statutory body by Congress in 1957 with the purpose of providing an independent review of the safety aspects of nuclear reactors. But the committee really began performing that same function under the name of the Reactor Safeguards Committee as far back as 1947. And I'm personally and professionally very grateful for the work of the ACRS, which has a history, as I've just noted, stretching back further than the Nuclear Regulatory Commission itself, and which continues to this day in the form of substantial contributions to the advancement of nuclear safety in the United States. So I extend my thanks to each of the gentlemen and one woman who now comprise the current ACRS. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge uh, many of you att attend the RIC every year. The security uh, personnel that you, that you see here are actually uh, have come over uh, from our uh, building complex to provide, uh, to make certain that things go smoothly here at the RIC. And these are uh, the same uh, men and women that uh, when you work in the, the, the complex across the street, as the chairman mentioned, we encounter these in individuals every day as we go about our business at NRC, and, and they've made a commitment to making sure that our, uh, our, our operations in that federal complex are going to be secure day in and day out, and they're the kind of people that you see when you come in early or you leave late at night, or maybe they're, you know, they're on their way to their security post, and I really have not have been intending to, but I've, I've not extended my appreciation to them for the work they do, but they also, some of them come over here and provide uh, a secure environment for this uh, RIC where we have the gathering of all these people. So I, I want to thank each of them for that. I, I also want to acknowledge the members of my own staff who are here, and I want to thank them for their contributions to the work that uh, I, I try to do every, each and every day. So I, I really appreciate their efforts and support of that.